The Celtic languages of Europe have nearly been lost to history, being relegated to the fringes of the European continent, spoken only by a relatively small amount of people in the British Isles and Western Europe. However, there was a time in history when nearly the entire continent was dominated by the Celts from the Iberian Peninsula to the Balkans and even beyond that. And although the modern Celtic nations may seem rather insignificant in our current geopolitical landscape, there really is a lot more than meets the eye with them, which makes them hands down one of the most influential groups in ancient and modern human history. Almost everyone knows the three main Celtic nations of the modern British Isles, that being Ireland, the mid-sized island off the coast of Great Britain, currently split between the Republic of Ireland, which is a sovereign country, and Northern Ireland, which is an integral part of the United Kingdom, along with Scotland, the northernmost region of Great Britain, containing many smaller islands to their north, and Wales, which is also a part of Great Britain to the west of England, but there are actually three other Celtic people groups in Europe. There's also the nation of Cornwall, which is currently administered as a part of England and is located on the southeasternmost peninsula of Great Britain, and their Celtic natives are known as Cornish, along with the Isle of Man, which is a small island in the British Isles located in between Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England, which technically is administered as a part of the British Crown, but is not considered a part of the United Kingdom. And their natives are known as Manx. And lastly is the nation of Brittany in northern France, located on a peninsula nearest the region of Cornwall in the UK, and their natives are known as Bretons. The Celtic languages today are divided between Gaelic, which includes Irish, Scottish, and Manx, and Britonic, which includes Welsh, Cornish, and Breton. However, there are very few monolingual speakers of Celtic languages left, with the majority of these various Celtic nations having their original language displaced by others with French and Brittany and English and all the others. In Scotland, only around 1-2% to of the population currently speaks the Gaelic Scottish language, mostly in the northwest and especially the island chain of the Hebrides. The language, which is frequently referred to as Scots, is actually a spin-off of English, which has been highly divergent, being spoken by about 30% of Scotland's population, while the rest of the Scottish population speaks other dialects of English. The Irish language is also spoken as a first language by about 1-2% to of the Irish population, however, following revivalist movements on the island today, around a fifth of Irish people, or over a million, have learned Irish as a second language. The Manx language on the Isle of Man is effectively extinct as a first language, although around 2% of the Isle's population has learned Manx as a second language. The situation is very similar in Cornwall, where the Cornish language died off as a first language in the 1700s, although revivalist movements have taught several hundred Cornish natives the original Celtic language, although it's not quite as successful as other Celtic revivalist movements in other areas. In Brittany and neighboring Lore Antique Department, which has also historically been considered a part of Brittany, currently about 5% of the population speak Breton, although only 70 years ago that number was as high as 40%, but has largely been replaced by the French language. The most successful case of Celtic revivalism has probably been in the region of Wales, where around 20% of the population speaks Welsh as a first language, mostly concentrated in the western portion, and in some small pockets and villages, Welsh is still spoken monolingually. Although, similar to the rest of the Celtic nations of the British Isles, despite large-scale movements to re-educate the youth in the various Celtic languages, English is still dominant in most aspects of life. The British Isles were actually originally entirely Celtic-speaking, being divided not only between the Gaelic branch in Ireland and Britonic in southern Great Britain, but also Pictish in Scotland, which is actually completely extinct with the other two branches evolving into the modern surviving Celtic languages today. Now, the Celtic languages, a branch of Indo-European, did not originate in the British Isles, as you can imagine, and their reach actually extended far beyond the regions that they currently inhabit, being the first major European group to spread out over large portions of the continent. The Celtic homeland was actually discovered to be in west-central Europe, around the area of modern Austria, Bavaria, and Switzerland, being established sometime around the year 700 to 800 BC, and although not politically unified by any means, was one of the first major modern civilizations in Europe. Different Celtic kingdoms were established in places like France with the Gallic Empire, the Celtiberians and Lusitanians of Iberia, and Noricum in Central Europe, all of which dominated Europe until the rise of the Roman Empire a few hundred years later. 
Before the rise of the Romans, Celtic peoples had managed to spread out throughout the modern-day countries of Spain, Portugal, France, Belgium, Austria, Switzerland, southern Germany, northern Italy, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, and even managed to stretch as far southeast into Turkey, establishing the Galatian culture in central Anatolia, which would later be annexed and invaded by the Romans, being incorporated as the province of Galatia. The expansion of Roman territory largely saw the destruction or assimilation of many Celtic nations in continental Europe, although the formerly Celtic peoples of France actually established a short-lived state known as the Gallic Empire from 260 to 274 AD before being reincorporated into the Roman Empire and having their people heavily Romanized over the years. The Celts gradually lost more and more territory to other language families such as the Romance, Germanic, and Slavic peoples, and by the 6th century AD, the last of the great Celtic empires in continental Europe had essentially been eradicated with there currently being no surviving Celtic languages in continental Europe other than Breton, which came from the British Isles, although many languages such as Galician in Spain and Friulian in Italy have a substantial amount of vocabulary of Celtic origin. The Celtic languages were thus isolated to their current position they occupy today, being pushed further and further northwest by incoming Germanic and Italic people groups, and even then they were nearly wiped out on multiple occasions with the Anglic, Saxon, and Norman invasions of England, but alas, they lived on to evolve into the modern people groups we know today. Now, it's extremely difficult to give justice to how much the Celtic nations have had an impact on the rest of the world, especially the United States and other Anglo colonies with a large settler population. Although England's population today dwarfs that of the nations of Wales, Ireland, and Scotland in the British Isles, being eight times as much as the island of Ireland, this was not always the case, as Ireland's population was 8 million in the mid-1800s, which was about 75% of that of England's population at the time, which actually makes it one of the only regions in the entire world where the population today is actually lower than it was 200 years ago. The reason for the extreme population decline and stagnation was largely because of the Great Famine, or Irish Potato Famine, in the mid-1800s, killing around 1 million people in only a decade, or easily over 10% of the population, along with a monumental and unprecedented movement of people, which today contributes to the single most lopsided diaspora of any ethnic or people group in the entire world. Although around 6 million people of Irish descent live in the island of Ireland today, upwards of 54 million people around the globe have at least partial Irish ancestry. Meaning that if every human being on the planet with Irish ancestry were to return to the island, the population would swell above 60 million people, outnumbering even the population of all of England. The diasporas of Scotland, Wales, and Cornwall are also impressive, although slightly less dramatic, with there being around 25 million Scottish, 4 million Welsh, and 3 million ethnic Cornish people outside of their respective home nations. The bulk of these immigrants headed to the United States, mostly the eastern half, with there being a higher Irish presence in the northeast in areas of New England, especially Massachusetts, along with New York, and Maryland, and New Jersey, while more Scottish and Welsh immigrants headed for the southeast to places like the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. This is the reason that so many black Americans in the U.S. today have a Scottish or Welsh surname, such as Jones, which is of Welsh origin. Celtic people groups also headed to Canada in huge numbers, especially on the Atlantic coast, and Scottish people are actually the largest ethnic group in the provinces of Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia, which translates to New Scotland. Canada is also one of the few places with a large number of Breton immigrants due to the huge French heritage in Quebec. Australia and New Zealand also received a huge amount of Celtic immigrants, and Australia has the highest percentage of people of Cornish ancestry of any country at around 3-4%, to while also having large numbers of Irish and Scottish as well. Other places with large numbers of people with Celtic origin would be Latin America and the Caribbean, with a majority of Afro-Caribbeans in places like Barbados, Jamaica, Bermuda, Trinidad, and the Bahamas have a significant amount of Irish ancestry. 
The southern cone of South America, that being Argentina, southern Brazil, Chile, and Uruguay, have also had a huge amount of Celtic immigration, with one of Chile's most populous regions being named after an Irish Chilean known as Bernardo O'Higgins. And Chubut province in Argentina has one of the few remaining enclaves of the Welsh language outside of Wales in a settlement in Patagonia. It's extremely difficult to determine just how many people in the Anglo world and beyond have Celtic roots as it's very common to find people with both English and partial Irish, Scottish, or Welsh ancestry that have simply integrated with the larger Anglo societies of these countries. Out of all 44 presidents of the United States, only six have not had any Celtic ancestry, with all the other 38 presidents having at least partial Irish, Scottish, or Welsh ancestry, from as far back as Thomas Jefferson, to Andrew Jackson, to even modern presidents like Barack Obama and Donald Trump. Many British colonists and colonial advisors were of Irish, Scottish, or Welsh origin, especially in places like the British Raj, with so many British officials in Burma being of Scottish descent, it was nicknamed the Scottish Colony. Although in our modern age, the Celtic nations may not seem to be of much importance in the grand scheme of world politics, it's important to look at the history of the Celtic peoples and just how much they influenced not only Europe, but the entire world, seeing how nearly all Americans and many other world leaders have been of either Irish, Scottish, or other Celtic origin. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the ancient and modern Celtic peoples and their impact on the world as a whole. And by the way, I personally actually do have about one-fourth Celtic ancestry, that being Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. Although, as far as I know, I have absolutely no English ancestry, which is pretty interesting. I'll be sure to do a DNA test and get it out by the end of the year, so. As always, thanks for watching, everyone. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.